Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Best Brew Ever. Um, here it is. This is uh, the Duff Trial 1, I guess, because it didn't actually come out right. Um, not what I expected. The um, Back to Basics Duff, which it wasn't supposed to be a Duff, it was just uh, you know testing the base malts and and checking out what you know the different fl uh, flavor profiles would be and how they would uh, you know kind of impact the different beers and when I did that one um, it was awesome I did just there was a couple of things that weren't the same as that for one I only did eight pounds in uh, this beer and I believe I did eight and a half um, in the back to basics so that half pound i don't know uh, it was super malty uh in my opinion and and um the back to basics uh beer that i made i did only thing different was the you know half pound less malt also had problem with my yeast um, as you've seen in the last video, at the end of the last video, when I was pitching the yeast, the, the packet didn't swell. Um, I pitched it anyway, and um, but I went ahead and ordered uh, another uh, packet, uh, smack pack of the uh, California lager yeast. And um, that one swole up, and then when I, when I went to pitch it, I seen there was croissant in there. So it was doing its thing. Um, also with uh, the um, the gasket that came with the fast ferment, uh, I didn't put one on there, and I it, it fell in a number of times. I had to get a spoon, my my mash spoon, and, and dug it out, and that, so I put my arm in there. I sanitized my hands, but not my whole arm. So maybe I don't know if uh, any wild yeast got in there. Plus, I didn't put that gasket on. And I could tell that it was kind of, it wasn't sealed all the way because uh, I could smell it. Uh, I could, it had like a sulfur smell when it was uh, fermenting and my, my airlock wasn't bubbling at all. And I, but I could smell a heavy sulfur smell coming from it. So uh, I, there was not a seal, not a, a airtight seal on that. So uh, I don't know if uh, some wild yeast got in there. Um, also, it's winter time now, and it's cold in this back room. Um, it's this was an addition. Whoever you know had the house, they built this back room on, and so there's no um, air ducts or anything coming in, in here. So this room is not you know heated or cooled uh, throughout the day. Or you know, whenever uh, we're cooling the rest of the heating or cooling the rest of the house, so there's you know a wall heater and a wall um, air conditioner, but I'm not running the wall heater. I'm trying to save you know, want to save some money. Don't want to you know heat a room that nobody's in all the time. So I just have a little heater that I bring back here and um, and just you know I use whenever I'm back here. Uh, so most of the time it's freezing cold back here. Um, at this, you know, uh, point in the uh, the winter time. So, but that yeast can ferment in little colder temperatures uh, because it is a, a lager yeast. Um, so it was doing its thing. So I think it was slowly, you know, uh, it kicked off slow. You know, uh, you know, it didn't have the warmer temperatures. And then I, because I had it back here, and then I moved it into the the uh, kitchen um, but I still didn't get any uh, bubbles in the airlock um, most likely because of that there was no seal in that gasket without that gasket um, but I did get I mean clear croissant and I pitched the other uh, packet so the end result I mean it's a cloudy beer I 
me. It's it seems to possibly have some off flavors. I I don't know if it's, when I first drank it, it was a little sour, but that could be just you know it's kind of young, you know, it hadn't been conditioned. I I kegged it and poured one off right away just to see what it was like. So I hadn't conditioned and uh, or carved and um, it's fairly carbonated now um, I only kegged this thing like two days ago um, so there, and it also tasted almost identical to uh, a wheat uh, beer it had kind of that peppery uh, kind of flavor and that would be from the yeast so that makes me think that maybe some wild yeast had got in there because I've never got that flavor from this yeast before and I've been using it on the, all the um, back to basics uh, beers so this was the first time I got that flavor so I did harvest um, some of that and I I might pitch it and just get some new um, yeast and uh, pitch it. I mean, when I say pitch it, I mean get rid of it, and then get some new yeast. Again, I don't want to keep spending a lot of money on that, but um, I don't want any wild stuff in there. I want it to taste the same every time. Um, so I don't know what happened with this. I think maybe I will add the other half pound into the the beer um, and try to just try to dial this in and uh, figure out exactly you know get it the way I want it exactly and then I can you know just go from there and, and keep having my 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 duff on tap whenever uh, whenever I feel like it it is an easy drinking beer I mean it's not bad at all now it, it has lost that peppery flavor um, it has been in the I don't know if you can see a little sneak peek to kegerator going and not going working and not working that that is a um, also uh, something we were going to talk about in this episode um, but I actually uh, put some ice packets in there and um, and you'll see why uh, later in the uh, in the video but um so I, it is pouring it's just not cooling um so as far as this beer um uh, it's not the duff that i want it to be um it's definitely drinkable but um we still have some work to do so future episodes we're gonna dial it in get it how we want it and uh, and get that going. Also, uh, with the keg raider in mind and the duff on in mind, I was at uh, uh, another project. I was at um, Goodwill the other day, and I picked up this Michelob tap handle for a dollar. It's in rough shape. I see nicks and and uh, these uh, labels are kind of peeling off but that's fine because I kind of want to I think I'm gonna turn this into my duff tap handle and it's also loose a little bit and uh, it's missing the uh, insert in there and actually as it is it doesn't fit this is actually too small to fit on my uh, kegerator now so I'll probably drill a hole wider put the insert in do something with these labels get duff on there possibly paint this orange or maybe leave it black maybe sand it maybe stain it I don't know there's a lot of things I could do with this um, I did mention in another video that I was gonna make a duff beer uh, tap handle I was gonna kind of just uh, get a piece of wood with and then uh, with my Dremel kind of carve it out uh, the duff logo um, I guess I could kind of do that here but that would be a, a lot of work I would do it three times so I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do it but I do think I'm gonna repurpose this for a dollar come on and it, it you know 
I think it'll look good up there. It's got that old style of uh, tap handle, so I like that. So that's another project to look forward to. Um, also coming up, we're going to... Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to show the next beer. I want to, but I kind of... Work has been so hectic. And last week... Uh, only got one day off from work you know long days so I kind of was wore out this weekend and I needed a brew uh, I'm gonna do uh, my Christmas beer uh, and I wanted to you know give it two weeks in the fermenter but it doesn't look like I'm there's no way I can get the brew in today and uh, today's Sunday so I'm not gonna be able to uh, to get to that so hopefully it will have ferment I get I'll give it a, a week and hopefully it will have fermented uh, all the way out in that week and um, you know we'll just uh, we'll just see how that goes um, of course you know like I said I've been working all these hours so my mind hasn't been right and things are just not working out uh, when I ordered that uh, that holiday beer I messed up the recipe I didn't really mess up the recipe but I didn't have I had just had to put them all in one grain bill and I needed to cut there was like 40 there's a pound of crystal 40 that I needed a half pound but I bought a pound and I had them put it all in one grain bill I was gonna measure it out here and then keep the other half of the crystal 40 for another beer to have on hand uh, but I just put all in one grain bill, so now I have an extra half a pound of the Crystal 40 in the beer, and in the uh, you know the grain mix, and the recipe doesn't call for that. So uh, I don't know how that's going to work out. Hopefully the beer comes out fine. Um, so I'm kind of put myself in a in a rush to get this one done. So filming wise, I don't know. I'll try. I'll try to get it filmed. Uh, I definitely want to get some more content on here, but uh, I might have to sacrifice the video to get the beer done. So, um, uh, as far as you know, beers go. Uh, that's the news for. That's the news for now. Um, but uh, make sure you uh, you know hit the notifications. You like and subscribe and uh, all those good things, um, so you can see whenever I'm gonna make. You know, I upload new videos. I'm not just doing my brewing videos. I'm doing, you know, things. You know, I go around Indianapolis here um, and do things, and uh, or I'm making, you know, different projects. I, I think I'll, I'm going to film something on the, you know, whatever I do with that tap handle. Um, but uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you the process, which everything was going good this bad boy the process of uh, my new kegerator everything was fine until the very end um, but make sure you watch uh, the videos coming up next and uh, you'll see where things went wrong all right stay tuned for more duff and uh, hope you uh, enjoy the rest of this video thanks everybody All right, here we are with the um, mini fridge conversion. Um, I've already kind of done a little bit to it uh, the other day. I started get got in there and mess around and, uh, and I did the first part, but I didn't record it. Let me show you what I did. All right, on the inside of the fridge here, try to get some light going in there um there was uh the top part is kind of like the the freezer part you can see there was uh this uh piece rested in here and on this side and then there was a uh another tray that caught water when it would defrost that sat there and then up in here there was uh, kind of like the the door a little door that you could open and then if you want to 
keep uh, the stuff up top uh, frozen or hidden or whatever. Um, so, as far as I can tell, I really don't know a lot about this, uh, how the components that are in here. But as far as I can tell, this mostly does all the, the cooling for the whole unit. So, um, back up in here, you can see the refrigerant come in here and, and pretty much freeze this. And then the residual uh, cold would fill the rest of the uh, this insulated uh, fridge and make, you know, whatever you put in here frozen and this uh, part just cold. So uh, I got to messing with it the other day and trying to figure out how I was going to take that out. And what I did, there is a little screw right here. And it looked like somebody maybe had been messing with it. It was stripped already. I just, now it's tight now, but it was loose. And I just kind of pulled on this and the whole thing came out. And when it did, um, the little door that was here fell out. And I took the tray out, and so that was all easy. So this was, you know, off the unit, and um, basically then I just uh, took some uh, needle nose, and because this was kind of like an L shape, kind of went in here and then went up, so it kind of was flat against this part of the wall, and then went across. So I just took some needle, uh, like a screwdriver and pried it a little bit and then took some needle nose and went all the way down and just bent it in and the same thing on, on this side, I just bent it in and then uh, I bent this part in a little bit and then I just pushed it down making sure I didn't uh, pinch, you know, that so the refrigerant could still come in. So this thing still gets cold. And then this had, you know, the, uh, the thermostat in it. Um, so I didn't cut any of the wires in here. I just left it and I put it, I, you know, it fit back pretty nice. So I just screwed it back in. Um, there, I screwed it back in. And um, so that was the first part of, and you can see this still kind of, this tray's uh, defrosting here. Because I, I have been putting my, beers in it just the way it is and it still keeps cold because I got my my uh, temperature control controller on it um, because I think the problem with this unit my brother-in-law gave it to me and I think it was uh, going crazy it would like freeze whatever was in there or it wouldn't be cold enough it was kind of doing whatever it wanted to so I think the temperature controls messed up or the thermostat or whatever so by having the external uh, controller, temperature controller that I had on my keyser, I just plugged it into this and now uh, it works as good as new. So that was the first part. Now, as you can see in there, it's got this, it's mostly where the compressor and everything's at under, oh, compressor is at underneath here. Um, so the keg, keg almost fits completely in there you can see it's just what half an inch or something sticking out um, hmm. now I'm looking at it what this I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get my yeah I might be able to because I if I had one of the smaller um co2 bottles it probably fit back there nicely but i don't i have a 20 pound which came with my teaser that big boy so it might fit in there if not then i'm gonna have to figure out something else nope not gonna fit but i'll figure so that's another, now that becomes another challenge that I'm going to have to figure out. Because I really don't have the money to go buy another, like a two pound CO2 bottle. Because that's like a hundred and something probably. So I'm probably going to have to drill another hole somewhere. And have this CO2 bottle on the external of this bad boy. So that's not good. 
but anyway i just want to get at least one working in there and you can see it does not fit like that so um i've seen somebody else convert one of these and the first you know they did do that step where they bent that down um, but they took this off this um kind of that strip there that, like the sealer and they unscrewed everything i think i'm going to leave that on i'm just going to leave that and i'm just going to try to cut cut out all this um all this uh you know extra molding so after that this is definitely not going to be used for well i can say definitely it's not going to be used for a beer fridge for the i used to have the you know a little holder where cans could go up here um but all that's going to be gone uh so that i think that's gonna be pretty simple i'm just going to cut that off with my uh, angle grinder and a and a cutoff wheel uh the hardest part i think is going to be figuring out where to mount my tower up here so i don't know what's all running through here i don't want to drill through anything that's supposed to be there um some people had said to use vodka and like baking soda or something like that i don't know what i'm gonna do i might just drill a hole about here and then take it you know don't go all the way through just to the surface and see what i can do i don't want to tear this bad boy up either i still want it to look kind of good but it, you know functionality is the main thing so let's uh let's get to cutting this off and we'll go from there let's see how i'm gonna start this back to get all that foam in there um there's a keg i'm not using right now or i'm not going to use for this beer oh yeah that's there maybe a little little snug i mean it's barely not fitting but i think maybe 
gets cold. When it's cold in there, we'll have more suction in it. But I think that's it. Yeah. If anything, I'll just cut out a little, you know, a little more. But I want to try to keep as much foam in there. I'll probably trim this down. Just try to get it flush, but I want to keep as much foam in there so this door stays insulated so everything is as cold as possible. But I mean, it's, it closes and it's not popping open, but it's just if you... it's good all right step two complete well just about all right before I go on I will just want to say after cutting that uh, that material uh, the foam the insulating foam was everywhere and I definitely think you know no that has to be a uh, Kind of, you know a hazard to your health so I wore a mask um, and glasses uh, safety glasses but just it would be so much better if I would have done that outside or somewhere where I don't want to get that uh, that foam on I knew there was gonna be some but I didn't think it was gonna be that fine of a powder and it was everywhere and I vacuumed and vacuumed and vacuumed and vacuumed and I still haven't gotten everything it was all over me the camera the camera stand still on the camera stand all over the the fridge just everything the you know my chairs just everywhere so uh definitely if you can do it outside do that um but just be well aware that at least using uh, my you know the cutoff wheel on the angle grinder it just got everywhere and i just want everybody to be safe and know that uh that's it's gonna be a mess this way but um, we got it done we got most of it cleaned up um, I'm still gonna go over uh, before I put anything in this fridge uh, I'm gonna wipe it down again make sure I get all that fine powder um, and uh, just be careful and uh, it should be all right but uh, on to the next step all right next I I've measured out where I think is going to be a good place to make my first uh, hole. I uh, just kind of check in there. Um, behind here, you know, they have the compressor and everything, all the components in the bottom, and it goes in about uh, was it five and one sixteenth. I don't think that really makes a difference. I mean, because it's just in the bottom. This is probably good to go all the way as far back. That does sound a little, you hear more hollow here. That sounds hollow. But that might just because, be because it's, uh, everything comes together here. So it might be more, Let's see how it's over here. But I think that'll be okay. Um, starting here, because then my tower would be about like that anyway. So it should give me enough room. And then I'll have, you know, this much space uh for like a drip tray or something like that so uh, it was 18 and a half from here to here so i cut that in half so nine and a quarter and uh made my mark so this is where i'm gonna I'll put a little tiny hole first i'm trying not to go try not to go too deep in there to make a from there we go. I don't have a, a little punch there, so I should, should be all right. Right. Looks like 
was just falling. I can tell it's it's just fun. So I think we're good. It's hitting something right there. So let's see. A couple inches. like we're good to go here uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and make my hole bigger uh, big enough to allow the uh, the beer line to go through and we're just about ready to call this one quits so oh, I also have to mount my um, screws for this thing damn powder um, but I'm gonna need something bigger than this perfect but I might want this to be bigger because a lot of people say you know you want um, I know it's all dirty you want the cold air to go up into the tower but I think for now I'm just gonna leave it like this um, I'm gonna get one of those hole saws um, that's about this diameter and go over that and cut that out probably stop by harbor freight and uh pick one up i forgot uh something i forgot but um uh, make sure uh, if you're doing that do you uh you could leave i guess it will still dispense but um uh, you gotta figure from here to here from you know with that down in there Let's see what it's gonna look like at it's pretty good um, but you got to figure from here to here that's gonna be warm beer room temperature beer so unless you're pouring um, you know several beers at once I mean the first the first beer is gonna be uh, room temperature and then however long it take you to drink that one this is gonna start warming up so um, I definitely am gonna get that hole saw Cut it to that diameter so uh, the cold air can keep all this cool but just for now i'm going to uh leave it like that until i can go get um, the hole saw Let me... and then i also want to make sure there's enough room on both sides Or there's equal so equal room. Can't see. That's not right. This is driving me crazy. Okay, so I got it centered how I wanted it. Um, I marked the holes where I'm gonna drill. We'll start off with a small, smaller bit.
my whole drill, but I need them to be wider. So let's see a bit. out of there again. Let's see if that does fit. Yep. All right. So I'm going to do mount that up and then figure out how I'm going to get some gas into this bad boy. All right, folks, here she is. All nice and shiny newish looking got my keg in there mine's ran you might be asking why is there ice packs in there well in my efforts to get this done uh, I was getting late already and uh, I was tired it was you know, Friday after work and we had already been out um, doing things uh, so I was very careful with everything measuring these things out and uh, slowly uh, put a little hole and then looked in there and used my um, little skewer to see if there's anything in there and then made the bigger holes whatever I didn't do that with this one an oversight a large oversight on my part because everything was fine, I hooked everything up, I plugged it in, and I started hearing a hissing sound. And immediately I think that the CO2 is escaping. I thought, well, maybe this was too rough, and it, but those lines are thick. These hoses are thick. So I immediately thought, well, I uh, had poked a hole or something in there, and I moved it. I, pull it out of the uh, kegerator to find the hole and I could still hear it hissing so then I pushed it in to see if I could hear the hissing on this on the inside of it and it was still just the same and then I realized it was coming out of the kegerator and when I would move the the hose it would go tss, 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 tss. so I realized there's something coming out of the kegerator and I left it on for like an hour, maybe 45 minutes. And the temperature controller never changed. It's not on right now. I have it unplugged. It stayed on 55. And this thing is not that big for the sensor not to pick up anything. And I that plate in the back where I assume most where the cooling comes from and you see up there you know comes through and runs through that and freezes it or cools it down and then it cools down the rest of this fridge um yeah it wasn't getting cold so only thing i can think was because i measured out you know so far here I should have done the same thing if you look it coming to here that is probably what three inches back farther two or three inches back farther 
than the hole I made here. So the only thing I think is maybe like a return coolant line I hit when I drilled in there. So I don't know what to do. I've never repaired anything like this before, but I'm gonna give it a shot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up cutting a small hole not going all the way through but just cutting the outer part of this uh, fridge and see if I can repair see if I can find the hose and see if I can repair that and then putting some refrigerant back in it and hopefully she's good to go after that uh, and then I'll patch that up I'll patch this side up somehow I'll figure it out um, but if I would have had the smaller um, CO2 tank that would have just you know fit inside fit back there and these little uh, perfect that would be perfect they wouldn't need the to cut the hole in there everything would be fine I have my kegerator would be happy could be happy to announce the new uh, project was a success but it's not at this point and but if you do have a uh, uh, little mini fridge like this everything else was a success and if you had that small bottle it would be su success for you and this is what the avanti fridge it was easy it was so everything was so easy i will say like i said before take this out so i'm still have this fine powder everywhere that was horrible but i mean other than that it's all good so um you know go ahead and if you want to try the same project i you know follow what i did just don't just be care more careful drilling any other holes any holes in it but you know learn from my mistake don't rush it and maybe uh you know hopefully you have the smaller bottle you won't need to drill more than one hole into it but uh, stay tuned for more fixes. I'll see if I can repair it and keep you guys updated. Um, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm really bummed out about it. It looks wonderful. I was so excited when I made it, but now I'm all bummed out. So uh, hopefully we'll have a, a better outcome and uh, we can just keep uh, pouring beers out of this bad boy. But I uh, appreciate you guys watching and uh, until next time.